Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and today I want to talk about LQD. This comes to us from iShares. It's their investment grade corporate bond ETF. Very exciting stuff, I know. Yields about 4%. Pretty safe, pretty secure. But we can jazz it up a little bit with some options. So today we're going to learn about how to jazz up LQD with options. And if you're new to options, well, you can learn this stuff. You got to get started somewhere. After all, Renee Zellweger, before she was in Jerry Maguire, look. She was drunk girl in the background of Dazed and Confused. All right, all right, all right. Now, we can learn this stuff. We can apply it. We can get to that 10 or 12% using options. So that's what we're going to learn about today. If that is what you're looking for. Please stick around. Whoop. So let's start out by taking a quick look at LQD over here on Seeking Alpha. And by the way, I'm a Seeking Alpha affiliate. I always mention that. There are affiliate links down below if you're looking for something like this. I like to do a lot of my research here on Seeking Alpha. So we're talking about investment grade corporate bonds, an ETF made out of all of these bonds, trading for about $109 a share currently. Expense ratio is fair at 0.14%. Dividend frequency they pay out every single month. Altogether over a year, about $4.47, which equates to a yield of about 4.07%. Got assets under management of $35 billion, right? So that's, uh, that's what LQD is. What does it have in it? Well, Scroll down here and get it all centered for you. We're going to see top 10 holdings. So all together down at the bottom, we see number of holdings, 2,715. Quite a bit, quite a few holdings, pretty diverse. And we're going to see great companies like Anheuser-Busch, CVS, T-Mobile, Pfizer, Goldman Sachs, the Boeing Company, maybe in a little bit of trouble, but I'm sure their bonds are okay at the moment, AT&T, and so forth and so on. So very good, secure companies paying out that 4%. So if you're just looking for some place to put your money, make 4%, you can, but after all, staying in cash right now, you can make 5%. So a lot of people look at this and say, what? But uh, yeah, that is the basics of LQD, corporate bonds. And we should look at the chart. So over the last year, we've been down as low as about 98. We've been up as high as about a 111. But we can zoom out. We can go all the way out to the maximum here, and we can go all the way back to about uh, 2002 with their data here. So we've been down there. Uh, back here, we were about 105, and we sit at 108, right? So it really hasn't gone anywhere and you shouldn't really expect it to go anywhere except when interest rates drive it or there is a significant event okay so the two that we see when we zoom out here is, is this one back here 2008 financial crisis this one right here big significant drop in march of 2020 we know what that was about and then we see this rapid decline since we have had uh, rising interest rates going back to what i think it was march of 2022 and we began so uh that would probably coincide right around here. Uh, yeah, pretty good articles. So interest rate sensitivity. Obviously, we got interest rate sensitivity with this product. So you have with TLT. So we have duration exposure, about eight and a half years with this particular product. And uh, if you believe they're going to cut interest rates, this will go up. If you believe interest rates are going to continue to rise, this is going to go down. And there are people in both camps. I can't tell you which way it's going to go right now. Uh, but uh, the majority of people, uh, believe that they're going to cut interest rates later in the year. We'll see if that plays out. We don't know for sure. They've uh, tricked us before. They will trick us again. Uh, but if we go to, uh, let's see, charting. Let me look at the chart here. So this is uh, a quick comparison because I get asked about TLT and TLTW especially a lot because people love that yield. So if we look at this, we're going to see TLT uh, just straight TLT and LQD, and this is a three-year chart. So we got LQD and the orange and TLT. So TLT clearly has more duration exposure than LQD, but we still had a decline. So down 20% over the last three years. We had a very low interest rate at that point, and now we have a much higher interest rate. And you can see 37%, 36% versus 19%. So about double, right? Um, so that's where we sit now when we compare these two products. And the, one of the reasons that I'm not a big fan of TLTW is because it only plays on one side of the fence. I think you should be playing on both sides of the fence, right? You should be selling puts and selling calls, but they just sell out of the money calls and they own the product. And I think that can hurt them at times. So uh, what I want to show you today is with LQD, may we play on both sides of the fence. So do you remember that game Pong from Atari? It was played on both sides of the fence. It was revolutionary. When it came out in the early 1970s, I think it was 1972. Just so much excitement when we got our hands on that. Look at that detail, that pixelated detail. Feel that soundtrack, that amazing 
Tech. And that amazing Pong game has led me to my amazing game plan. Yes, feel the sarcasm, but it is actually what I'm doing. So nevertheless, let's picture our court here. On one side, we can sit in cash. When we've talked about this, right? We can sit in cash over here making 5%, and we can still sell out of the money puts and try to collect 5 to 7% on LQD by selling out of the money puts. That's going to give us a 10 to 12% overall return. That's the goal. If it ever gets assigned to us, well, guess what? We volley it across to the other side. On the other side, waiting for us is LQD, making 4% in bonds as we sit in that, waiting for us to be able to sell it at a higher price or at the price that it was assigned to us in the first place. We're going to do that by selling out of the money calls and trying to collect 6 to 8%, 1% more to keep us at that 10 or 12% overall return. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's my Wealth Adventures registered, copyrighted, and trademarked awesome, amazing game plan. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're brand new to options and you're still trying to learn it again, you can learn this stuff. It's not that difficult, right? I mean, Billy Zane had to go through it before he was sinking on the Titanic. He was some guy in the back of a car chasing Marty McFly in back to the future, right? See there. Hi, Billy. So anyway, this stuff can be learned, I guess is my point. So, uh, if you want to uh, give it a shot, I've got plenty of other videos. I'll link one up above to get you started. The Pong analogy is fun. I get it. Who doesn't like a nice, fun game of Pong? But really what we're talking about is the wheel strategy. And in this case, what's fun about this, if you're new to options, is you can kind of throw some of the Greeks out. You don't have to worry about Delta too much and things like that. We want to be selling out of the money puts, out of the money calls that are above the strike price that we were assigned at. We want to hopefully have a nice return overall. Uh, knowing that we do have interest rate sensitivity and uh, this thing could move in the wrong direction. Now, I think this is a pretty good trade for me because I'm either sitting in cash making 5% and adding in some put option income, or I'm being assigned shares and I'm moving over to the other side of the fence where I'm making 4% in a pretty safe and secure bond ETF, right? And then I'm gonna be selling calls. Now, one of the reasons that I feel comfortable doing this is because I can do several contracts. So if one contract gets assigned to me, I can do another one, another one, another one. So it is cost prohibitive. You have to have a, a, a good source of funds to be able to do this. But if you can do that, you can average down in case interest rates start to rise again. Don't think that they can't. Don't think that they're just going to start coming down mid-year like a lot of people believe. I'm not saying that it, that won't happen, but I also believe that it could continue to rise. If it rises, this is going down. I'm going to have to be able to buy more shares or have more shares assigned to me at those lower rates and average into this product. So that's one of the reasons that I feel good. So with that said, let's, let's jump in and take a look at what this would look like actually making the trade and we're going to use Fidelity. So now let's set up a quick example trade on Fidelity and see exactly what our return might look like with something like LQD, which is currently at 109.62. So here's my setup. I'm going to sell to open a one put contract at about a month. I picked March 8th. I picked a strike price of 108.50. And if I was to execute that, I get somewhere between 64 and 70 bucks. So if I set a limit order of 66 cents, right? Since there's a hundred, uh, one contract equals 100 shares, that would give me $66. And after fees, $65 and 35 cents. If that's confusing to you, I'm going to link a video above. You can watch that to kind of reinforce this and go into a little bit more depth of what that means. But in this case, I'm going to collect this $65.35 that's going to go into my account, and we're off to the races, all right? Now, my max loss here is a very big, scary number. This is essentially saying the ETF LQD goes to zero. Is it going to do that? No, it's certainly not going to do that. Could it go to 100 or 90 or 80? Yes, it could do that. And in that case, I would be on the hook for buying this 108.50, right? Now, I did get my $66, so I could take that away. And that gives me my break even of 107.84. So you have to be comfortable with this idea of buying this 100 shares. Move that over two decimal points. All right. So that's 10,850 bucks. Plus you get the 66 dollars. That gives me my weight break even of 107.84. I'm on the hook for that. So if it goes to uh, 100, I'm down 784 bucks. If it goes to uh, uh, 90, I'm not uh, down 1784 dollars. Okay. So you have to be comfortable with that idea. Uh, but if you are, that's just how you would set it up. So based on the 65.35, I'm gonna put this into a calculator and kind of see what that return looks like. So to get our return, all we have to do is crunch a few numbers. So in this case, I'm gonna use my cash secured put calculator, which I've shared before in this channel. You've probably seen it if you've been following along. So I've got today's uh, date, I've got the number of contracts, we've got the expiration date, we've got the stock price, 109.62, and I've 
Sold a put with a strike price of 108.50. That means that's a fall below 108.50 for it to get assigned to me. We're gonna assume we're just gonna hold this all the way till expiration. So 108.50 is about 1% below the current price. So it has to drop 1% for it to be in the territory where it could get assigned to me, okay? Now we have different options with options. We can always do things like rolling out this option and try to delay the inevitable, maybe, right? Maybe we could roll to a lower strike, add more time. Lots of things that we can do, but let's assume we're going to take assignment if it falls below that. If it stays above it, it's going to expire naturally. That would be great, right? So we're gonna collect $65.35 in this case, but we are on the hook for $10,850. Why? Because if it does fall below 108.50, we're gonna take assignment of those shares. That means we have to buy 100 shares at 108.50, which is 10,850 bucks. Minus the $65.35 that we did collect. So you have to be comfortable with this. It's really important that you're comfortable buying those 100 shares if you enter a contract like this. So that's 33 days that we're gonna hold this. Over those 33 days, it's gonna give us a return of about 0.6%. If we did that all year long, repeating this trade and we annualize that, that would give us a 6.66% return over the course of the year, okay? so. That's just a kind of a snapshot for this one particular trade. But if we can repeat this, continue to do this, along with the 5% that we're gonna re be earning, whether we're in cash or in LQD making 4%, then we're looking at something in that 10 to 12 range, right? So this is again, just an example, but illustrates where that number is coming from. And here's a real world example of that exact type of trade. So this is something I have in my portfolio currently. This is LQD with the March 15th expiration and a 107 strike price. It's a sold put. I did four contracts, collected about 50 bucks per contract, $209.29 altogether. It's kind of working in my favor right now, but we will see as we approach March 15th what this is like. So keep an eye on it for me, LQD at a 107 strike price. But so far, so good. Maybe I'll have to sell some more if it continues to drop and average down. But in the long run, I think it's going to offer me a nice overall return and if nothing else, I'll be sitting in those bonds uh, collecting 4% with this pile of money. And of course, if this discussion about selling puts and calls is confusing to you, I'll link a video up above to help you get started. Put a little time and effort into it and you can learn it. After all, you don't just start off as a star in Shawshank Redemption. You start off as this awkwardly tall pilot behind Tom Cruise and Top Gun. Go Tim Robbins. So what do you think about my LQD idea? Let me know down in the comments below. Can I turn this 4% boring snoozing corporate bond ETF into an 8, 10, 12% covered call juggernaut and not pay any fees? It's perfect for me. And then I know I said it is cost prohibitive, so it's not gonna be right for everyone. But if you've got that pile of 50, $60,000, do what I'm gonna do. I'm going to Vegas for the Super Bowl and I'm gonna turn it into like 120, 180, easy, no problem. They like to give money away while you're out there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to come back and this will be even easier with all those funds to back it up. All right, we'll see. Anyway, like and subscribe if you like this kind of fun stuff and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great night. Take care.